hey what is good you guys welcome back to the channel and in today's video we're going to do a continuation of the series on python logging uh, so we've done one video already uh, where we saw the basic setup of a python logging what the logging module offers and why we need to use logging in the first place so this is going to be a continuation of that if you haven't checked the first video already uh, i do suggest you uh, take a look at that i'll leave a link to it in the description and in the i button as well with that being said let's get started this video is going to be about logging handlers and what do logging handlers do? They decide the fate of or the destination of your log record which is generated. Uh, by destination I mean whether they, whether they are going to be written to the console, whether they are going to be write, written to a file, whether they are going to be suppressed or whether they are going to be sent via an email or something like that. In the, uh, in the standard logging module, a lot of handlers are available as you can see on the left hand side. We're not going to study all of them. We're going to study a few or we're going to look at a few of the common ones which are stream handler, file handler, null handler, the rotating handlers which are both time and file based and also an implementation of the SMTP handler. So uh, those are the few important ones, not like uh, not that the others aren't, but we actually uh, this video might become a bit longer. If you want any individual implementation, you can request that in the comment section. So the first two handlers which we are going to look at is the stream handler and the file handler. So as per the documentation, what the stream handler does, it writes the output to a stream such as a standard error or standard output. And what the file handler does is writes the output to a file as the name suggests. So let us look at an implementation of the same. Now typing this out would be a little bit of, or uh, would elongate this tutorial a little bit. So what I've done is I already have the code. I will share the repo with you as well. But the idea of, idea of getting a stream handler or initiating a stream or file handler is pretty simple. What you do is you initialize, you initialize a logger, set the default level of a logger, and then on the logging, the stream handler and the file handler are available in the base of the logging module itself. So you can just call logging.streamhandler and logging.filehandler, give it a file name and that is how you initialize both the handlers. Now you now we do not have to stop at just initializing the handlers but we also have to set a formatter for them. So we have created a common formatter using the logging.formatter and we are just going to dis display the time, the log level, the message and the name of the uh, code which we are executing or name of the file. Now this formatter is assigned to the both the handlers stream and file handler using the set formatter method of this so that we only see the error logs in the file and on the file or the uh, file which is written on the disk does not get overloaded with information and all those types of logs. And uh, as a final step what we've done is for to the logger which we created we have added a handler using the add handler method and both the stream and file handler are done. We created some uh, what do you say uh, just logs to uh, help us uh, run this code and just to see what the output is and if it is what we expect it to be that is if you see we have written the error logs to the file handler so only error and critical should be written to both the console and the file but stream handler uh, the stream handler will show all the four logs so I'm now going to run this okay file rate does not exist Okay, so what I've done is I've actually renamed this uh, folder. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy the relative path of this and I'm just going to do this and now I am going to run this and hopefully it should run okay. Yeah, this is, so if you see the console now contains all the four logs because we have set the debug as the default level for the stream handler and if you see the log.txt, it only contains the error and the critical ones so that is how you specify the uh, file and the stream handles and that is a simple impl simple implementation I, I don't know why I keep say, saying implementation but I think it's I don't know if it's just me or uh, that gets confused with the word so that is about stream and file handler so the next one which you're going to see is the rotating file handler and as the name might give away what it does is it rotates the log file once the file reaches a certain parameters which we specify during the instantiation of the rotating file handler class now just worth pointing out, uh, just worth pointing out that unlike the null handler or the stream handler the rotating file handler is not available in the logging base but it is available in logging.handlers so while importing it you just have to be careful that you have to do a logging.handler and from that you have to import the rotating file handler now let us look at the implementation of the rotating handler class so what it does is it takes in a few parameters and what are the interesting parameters are 
uh, the max bytes, which is the num uh, the size of the file after which it needs to be rotated. The backup count will tell you uh, how many uh, files or uh, how many backup files will be created. So what I've done is I've done a max bytes of 2000. Uh, so 2000 bytes is what will be the size of one file. So and so I think roughly 2 KB and the backup count is 20. So uh, each and every file would be approximately of somewhere around 2 KB. So let me just make it 2048 just to be clear. And now what I've done is I've just written a test log and let me I've called this uh, create rotating log function. Now let me try to run this code and let's see what happens. So if you see it is created 13 files because and if you look at the size of the files if you look at the first file it will have some data then this also has some data that is all the logs uh, I mean is written to the files so if you see uh, the files are full and the logs are now written to that so this is what a rotating file handler does that it rotates the file when it reaches a certain size so just to give you an idea whether the files are exactly 2 KB, what I'll do is I'll reveal this in Explorer. And yeah, if you see, most of the files are 2 KB, and the last one is 1 KB because uh, I mean we ran out of uh, logs to output. Moving on to the next one, we stick with the rotating file handlers, and this time we're going to look at the time rotating file handler. So in the previous one, what we saw was a rotate the file was rotated when it reached a certain amount of uh, when it filled a certain amount of space or it reached a certain amount of size. In the time rotating file handler, what happens is the file is rotated rotated after a fixed uh, what do you say fixed interval. Now the fixed interval, the parameters which it takes in are obviously the file name. And let me again correct the path for this one. Copy related path. So I don't want to mess up the base of the path. And then when interval and backup count, the interval and backup count are same. And when uh, this parameter is something which we will look at. So let us calculate when. Now, what the when parameter specifies is at what time or what in uh, what time do you want the file to be rotated? Whether you want to be rotated, uh, whether it, you want it to be rotated every second, every minute, every hour, or every day. So that is also something possible. Midnight or rollover at a certain day is also available. So that is about the uh, when parameter. So now what I've done is uh, I've already again prepared some test data or some test code is already available. The, uh, the basic setup of the logging remains same so i'm not going to talk about it we're just going to talk about the handler and the parameters so just worth keeping in mind the when parameter takes in seconds hours minutes and you can actually look at that uh, if you click on the uh, impl uh, implementation as well and now if i run this python code and hopefully it should run and if you see it's also available and what might also be worth pointing that it also gives us the date um, the file um, the file naming is also pretty nice and it gives us when these logs were generated so if you see it were it was generated on the 4th of july at 13 14 15 16 17 which is one second one second interval and we have five backup files so just open one of these uh, it has just test some test data more test data and if you see it has written the outputs to the files so let me close this one so that is about time uh, time rotating file handlers and you can use them when you want to rotate files so if you want to create daily files uh, then you can just use uh, the time rotating file handler as well so the next one is pretty simple and a short one it's called the null handler and it is used for special cases by special cases i mean people who are developing python packages they are the ones who should be using this now why use this is simply because you do not want to see all the package logs package logs in your application for example if you are downloading 10 packages from the python package index and using it in your application you do not want to see all the uh, logs from the 10 packages in your application logs because that would just mess up the logs you do not you might have trouble finding what is useful and what I that is what is coming from your application and what is coming from one of those 10 install libraries so it is recommended that the python package the people who develop python packages need to use the null handler it's again simple uh, it is again simple you can initialize uh, in, uh, if you have developed a package in the packages init.py you initialize the null handler and the rest of the modules can work as uh, i mean the rest of the modules which you have in your packages or the python code which you have other than uh, in your package can continue to use this and this logger will not i mean this log would not be propagated in the uh, application log who is using this 
so that is a, uh, that is how you can implement a null handler and it is used in case of uh, it is useful for people who are developing packages okay, so the last one for today is going to be the smtp handler and the smtp handler implementation what it does is it takes in the log and it passes it to the uh, it sends it over email so the implementation again is pretty standard uh, just to point out that the smtp handler again is not available within the logging it is available in logging.handler so what we have now done is we have done uh, inherited the smtp handler and we have written our own class called as trs smtp handler although this is not a, a trs implementation uh, i'm uh, this is what this is something which i'm trying now before we move on let's look at the smtp handler base class itself so what it does is it takes in the mail host as a parameter uh, uh, mail host as a parameter the from address to address subject credentials and secure so the mail host has to be uh, a tuple which specifies obviously uh, the uh, host name and the port the second one is the from address and the to address now to address can be a list so if you see uh, passed in passed it as a list so you can send it to multiple what do you say multiple recipients the subject uh, i think you can give it anything i've given it as error form and the last is the credentials so the username and password so you can just use your google or whatever uh, credentials they are and once you run this code uh, uh, the setting setting the formatter and setting the level again remains the same and if you run this code instead of output uh, outputting it to uh, the console now it will obviously uh, complain because uh, we have not supplied the username parameter but it will it will do something like this so i tested this code out some time back and it will uh, it will give you the error so if you compare the formatter actually it's almost it's the same uh, the time the level name the function name and the message so if you see the time the log level the module which it came from and the message so this is uh, how the smtp handler is useful okay so that brings us to the end of the second video in the python logging series where we have looked at various types of handlers and just to repeat the stream and the file handlers are the most common ones the rotating file handlers of uh, both the time and the file uh, rotating file have interesting use cases the smtp handler is also something which you can use although i don't see a production uh, i have not implemented it in the production yet uh, because we do have alternate um, you know, ways of sending logs via email and so yeah that is about it but if you do find the use case of it uh, do let me know in the comment section so uh, thank you for watching i hope the uh, video did add some value to you and you learned something new if you did uh, do consider liking uh, liking the video sharing it with your friends and also please do not forget to subscribe to the channel if you are new for watching. Bye for now.